Elizabeth Murray uh, could not join us today, but she uh, sent a letter. Elizabeth Murray was a CIA open source analyst, pressured to find what turned out, of course, to be non-existent evidence linking Al-Qaeda to Saddam Hussein by Paul Wolfowitz's office in early 2003. My name is Elizabeth Murray. I retired in 2010 after a 27-year career with the CIA. My last position was Deputy National Intelligence Officer for the Near East at the National Intelligence Council. For the first 20 years of my career, I was a senior political and media analyst with the CIA's open source arm, for many years known as the Foreign Broadcast Information Service, FBIS, which later became the Open Source Center, OSC, and is now called the Open Source Enterprise which monitors and translates foreign leader speeches, newspaper editorials, and other foreign news of, in of interest to US policymakers. <sighs> Our job was to analyze the speeches of foreign leaders and the political spin of foreign media content and help our policymakers understand the implications for US policy and interests. It was exciting, challenging, and very interesting work. Our office building has always been physically separate from the CIA headquarters at Langeley, Virginia, and we enjoyed a reputation for fiercely independent and politicized intelligence analysis. Poly policymakers and desk level analysts alike, alike praised our work regularly. It was a good place to be. In early 2003, just prior to the launching of the US attack on Iraq, I was a senior analyst in charge of Iraqi media at the OSC. The political atmosphere around the Beltway had become very charged amid allegations that Saddam Hussein possessed weapons of mass destruction, and there were active efforts afoot to link him to Al-Qaeda and the events of 9-11. The drumbeat for war was in full swing. One morning, I received a telephone call from the office of, the, of then Deputy Defense Secretary Paul Wolfowitz, asking us to find media reportage of meetings between Al-Qaeda representatives and Iraqi officials. There was a strong implication in the way the tasking was conveyed to me that a meeting between the two sides had in fact taken place, possibly in Prague, and that we needed to find the evidence. I gave the tasking my highest priority. I immediately contacted our overseas bureau in the Middle East in charge of monitoring and translating Iraqi media. We had the monitor we had the monitors, translators, undertake an exhaustive search of all relevant Iraqi media reports in our archives that might contain such information. We also leveraged other resources available to us in Baghdad so that they could check on less, lesser known Iraqi media sources. We pulled out all the stops. About two weeks later, we received a definitive response. There was no evidence in Iraqi media of any such relationship between Al-Qaeda and Saddam Hussein's regime. I promptly reported this information to Wolfowitz's office. I assumed that was the end of the matter. However, about a week later, Wolfowitz's office phoned us again asking for the same thing, media evidence of an Iraqi government link with Al-Qaeda. So I again marshaled all the resources we had at hand and dedicated some of our overseas staff to a full-time search. Again, the finding was negative. Again, I reported this back. Unbelievably, a few weeks, the tasking came to us a third time. It was slowly dawning on me that we were not providing his office with the answer they wanted. We were being subjected to political pressure. We had already extended many hours and many US tax dollars on this search and I trusted our seasoned media professionals when they said there was no evidence of these allegations. So I asked Wolfowitz's office where they had heard the meeting between Al-Qaeda and our Iraqi officials had taken place in hopes that might aid our search. However, I never received a response to my request and the phone calls to my office ceased. Of course, we now know these allegations were pure fiction as were the allegations that Saddam possessed weapons of mass destruction. By 2006, three years into the war on Iraq, the Bush administration officially admitted it had no evidence of any Iraqi role in the 9-11 attacks, either direct or indirect. Nevertheless, the US continues to devastate that country to this very day. It is time to face the truth and hold our leaders to account for the terrible war crimes committed against the Iraqi people. And it is time for the United States to withdraw from Iraq and allow the Iraqi people to rebuild their country free of foreign interference. Elizabeth Murray.